Hello everyone, Professor Christensen here. Today we're going to take a look at analyzing transactions, which is one of the first steps in recording um, the things that happen in businesses, which we call accounting transactions. So let's use this example of a landscaping business, which hopefully a lot of people can relate to. Let's say that you and your friend decide to start a landscaping business and each of you invest some money and then some other friends and relatives also put in some money. So you have some other investors. And so what we're going to do is look at a bunch of typical transactions, simple transactions, and see what accounts they affect. This is the first step before you can do debits and credits, right? Before you can, can um, start with the whole accounting cycle and debits and credits, you have to know um, which two accounts are affected and whether they're going up or down. And then after that, we'll turn into debits and credits. Okay, so let's take a look at these transactions. First one, company issues common stock to investors for cash. So the first thing a company would do, of course, is to get some money. Now, we need to decide what are the two accounts that are being affected. Well, don't be afraid to look and see what some of the words are, right? It looks like the two accounts that are being affected here are common stock and cash. So anytime an investor invests money into a company and gets stock, for now we're assuming it's common stock, these are the two accounts that are going to be affected. All right, so cash is going up, right? So we're going to say increase in cash because the money is coming into the company, right? So the company is getting money. What else is increasing? Common stock is increasing. Now, don't be fooled. The thing with common stock that sometimes confuses students is that um, the company is giving out shares. So it feels like stock is going down, right? But stock is actually going up. What common stock represents in a company's balance sheet is the amount of money that was paid into the company by investors. So when investors invest money, increase cash, increase common stock. That's the kind of transaction you should memorize because you see it over and over and over again, right? Okay, next up. Equipment is purchased by signing a note. All right, again, let's look for some hints. Equipment, okay? So we, we bought equipment and then we see this word note. All right, so what happened to the equipment in the company? It went up, right? Increase in equipment. And then we signed a note. So what does that mean? We borrowed money and we signed a note. So what that means is note payable right? Because the company owes money. So it's just like borrowing money from a bank, but we're borrowing money from whoever sold us the equipment. So we have an increase in notes payable. Okay. All right. Next up, employees are hired who will begin work next week. All right. So now you're thinking, well, what is that? Is that salaries? Is it salaries payable? Is it salaries expense? What could that be? But if you think about it, an, a, an accounting transaction has to affect assets, liabilities, or stockholders' equity. Well, hiring employees doesn't affect any of those. So this is an A, not an accounting transaction. Okay? No effect on any of the accounts. When will we have an effect? Stay tuned. We'll see that in a minute. All right, next up, rent is paid for a year for a garage to store equipment. All right, so maybe you remember that when you pay rent ahead of time or you pay insurance ahead of time, we call that prepaid. So we have an increase here in prepaid rent. All right, prepaid rent is an asset. Remember, an asset has future benefit. The benefit is that we get to use that garage for the next year. All right. Now, when you see paid, paid means cash is going down, right? If you pay something yourself, your, your cash, your personal cash is going down, right? And that's what's happening here. So decrease in cash. Okay. Next up, supplies are purchased on account. 
supplies are purchased on account. All right, so we're buying some supplies. What does that mean? Our supplies are going up. Increase in supplies. Supplies is an asset. Okay. All right. On account, on account means we haven't paid for it yet. Okay. We haven't paid for it yet. We didn't say supplies are purchased for cash. So we still owe the money. So that means we have an increase in our accounts payable. Remember, accounts payable is a liability. It's just like open account. It's like you um, you bought some inventory and you haven't paid for it yet, or you got a utility bill in the mail and you haven't paid for it yet. Okay. All right. Next, services are provided to customers for cash. All right. When you see services provided, and we also see cash here, right? Services provided means service revenue. Okay, if you provide services, that means you've earned some revenue. And in this case, we're getting cash, so increase in cash. And then the other increase is service revenue. Okay, by the way, once you learn your debits and credits, come back to this and you can turn these into debits and credits. All right. Okay, next up, employee salaries are paid. Aha, remember I said to stay tuned? Here we're paying the employees from number three. Remember we said paid, paid means decrease in cash. I'm putting our credits on the right and our debits on the left, by the way. So just if you learn debits and credits and you wanna come back, you can you could check that out, okay? Um, all right, so now employee salaries. So what do we call that employee salaries? We call that salaries expense. Increase in salaries expense. All right, next up. Money is borrowed from the bank by signing a note. All right, what's another word for money? Cash, we're getting money, right? We're getting cash. So increase in cash, cash is going up. We're signing a note, very similar to up here in number two. In this case, we owe the bank money. So increase in notes payable. All right. Okay, next, services are provided. All right, hopefully you remember, services are provided is this, increase in service revenue, put it right there. Now the difference is, this says on account. And what does that mean? That means our customers haven't paid us yet. So here we had increase in service revenue and increase in cash. Here we don't have any cash coming in yet. The customers owe us money. Hopefully you know that that is called accounts receivable. So increase in accounts receivable. Now a lot of times students get accounts receivable. Let me type that so I talking and typing at the same time. A lot of times um, students get accounts receivable and accounts payable mixed up. I know they sound similar, but remember, Accounts receivable means the company is going to receive money in the future. And accounts receivable usually has to do with service revenue or sales revenue, right? Accounts receivable has to do with customers. It means you are going to receive money. A payable, like accounts payable or notes payable, is a liability because the company has to pay in the future, right? So if you're paying, that's a liability. All right. So when you when you provide services to your customers and they owe you money, we call that accounts receivable. All right. Next up, we pay for supplies. Pay for supplies. All right. So we said pay means decrease cash. Whoops. We're decrease our cash. Now, what else is happening here? We're paying for the supplies purchased in number five. When we bought the supplies, we already recorded the supplies, so we can't, we don't want to hit supplies again, right? So you have to be careful here because you see the word supplies, and a lot of times students want to put supplies, but you have to think about it. Look back at the related transaction. You recorded supplies already. You don't want to do it again. What are we paying? We're paying the accounts payable, right? We are paying this. So instead of increasing our accounts payable, we are decreasing our accounts payable. We're paying a liability, okay? We're paying off a liability. 
All right, next up, customers pay. Customers pay, now you have to be careful. We are not paying, the customers are paying. So even though we see pay, be careful. The company is not paying, the customers are paying us. So now if the customers pay us, what do we have? Increase in cash, right? Increase in cash. All right, what are the customers paying though? They're paying, again, be careful. The customers are paying us, but we already recorded the service revenue, right? We don't want to record service revenue again. So what are, we, what are we hitting? What is the customer paying us? Well, they're paying their debts that they owe us, which to us is a receivable. So we have a decrease in accounts receivable. Okay, our accounts receivable going down. The customers owed us money. Now they paid us, they don't owe us money anymore. All right, okay, last one. Dividends are paid company is paying, dividends are paid to stockholders, dividends, dividends are paid. Okay, so we said paid means decrease in cash, dividends, remember, are distributions to stockholders. It's, it's you, the company has profits and they decide, okay, we're going to give some of these profits back to our owners. So we're going to increase, oh, we're not red anymore. Let's make this red. We're going to increase our dividends, dividends account. Okay, increase dividends. By the way, this in the long run will decrease retained earnings. All right, so it could be that depending on how you're learning this, it could be that you just decrease retained earnings directly. But generally speaking, we, we're, we're increasing our dividends Dividends are a reduction of retained earnings because they come out of our profits, okay? All right, so that's a quick overview of some common transactions in accounting for a introductory accounting class. Um, I hope you find this helpful. Uh, go ahead and hit subscribe if you would like to do that. That would be great for me. And uh, good luck in your accounting studies. It's been fun studying accounting together.